Okay, should you use worms to process horse manure? We'll get to that here on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill and I own the Urban Worm Company. So I got an email from a reader this week. She uh, owns a horse farm out in Idaho and she has 30 horses. And she says, I've got a manure problem like you wouldn't believe. And I said, I would imagine that you do. And she wants to use worms in order to process this manure. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about whether this is a good idea. Now, there are a couple things that I want to say before we get into this. I love the idea of manure and earthworms and earthworms and manure. Uh, it, one of the, the nicknames for the red wiggler is the manure worm. This is for a good reason. If you go to any farm or horse farm especially and you, you turn over a pile of horse manure that's there, you're probably going to find a lot of happy worms and they're going to be composting worms. But there are a few issues with uh, with this this lady's idea that I want to bring up. And if you're thinking about using earthworms to solely manage horse manure, there are a few things that you should be aware of. The first thing is that the average adult horse produces about 50 pounds of manure every day. In order to process 50 pounds of manure per day, you need 200 pounds of earthworms. So for every horse that you own, uh, which horses are of course expensive in, in their own right, you're going to need about $4,000 to $6,000 worth of worms uh, just to process the manure. So this can get very expensive very quickly. So to use our friend's example, if she's got 30 horses, now let me just say I failed high school algebra, but at least I think I did the math on this correctly, is that she would need 120 to $180,000 worth of worms, uh, that's what the value would be on the open market if she were just to buy them, uh, in order to process this amount of waste. So that is an obstacle in and of itself. But even if you had enough worms or you had enough schmundo to go out and buy that, that, that amount of worms, then you're still left with another problem, which is that you're still going to have to hot compost which what we call pre-compost uh, that manure before you set the set the worms loose on it because uh, horse manure is uh, really comes out at about a 20 to 1 uh, carbon to nitrogen ratio you add a little bit of carbon you're gonna get some awesome hot composting going problem is you don't want to do that on your earthworms so you are still going to have to pre-compost uh, this material for about four to six weeks you're going to get the the, the temperature up uh, in that horse manure to about 130 to 140 degrees it's going to kill the weed seeds it's going to kill pathogens that is going to be necessary if you're talking about managing uh, managing horse manure at scale there's a problem specifically with horse manure that you should be aware of, and that is persistent herbicides. So persistent herbicides, there are about four or five of them, are a highly targeted herbicide meant to kill thistle, which often grows along with hay. So uh, horses don't want to eat hay that has thistle in it, so farmers often will uh, spray their crops, uh, hay farmers will spray their crops with these persistent herbicides to keep that thistle at bay. The problem is, and this is why it's called persistent, is that these uh, herbicides do not break down even in hot composting, and they can persist in the soil and in the compost for years. In fact, hot composting makes the the presence of the persistent herbicides even more pronounced because uh, as the organic matter and everything else in the horse manure breaks down that persistent herbicide does not break down so you actually increase the uh, intensity or increase the parts per billion uh, and it's only a few parts per billion for persistent herbicides to actually be able to kill certain plants uh, that you actually increase that intensity so for those of you that would plan on using worms or any sort of hot composting to manage horse manure for the purpose of selling the castings, uh, then this is a prob This is something you're going to want to look into because uh, because it is becoming a problem and it's and it's more of a problem now than what it used to be. So let's just say that persistent herbicides are not an issue, and we're going we're back to the issue of should I use worms to process horse manure? The only reason that I would tell somebody to to yeah go for it is if you plan to sell the worm castings. Otherwise the cost of, of the vermicomposting is actually just going to be uh, too expensive to too expensive to justify so I would not uh, I would not look into that what I would do is I would just hot compost that manure what I really love the idea of doing is using aerated static pile in order to process that that uh, that that horse poop uh, specifically you should go look at uh, Peter Moon at O2 compost you can find uh, you can find his products at o2compost.com Peter is kind of an aerated static pile uh, guru of sorts, and uh, he has some absolutely beautiful designs uh, for aerated static bins that not only function really well, but they look absolutely gorgeous. 
So if you go see Peter at O2 Compost, please let him know I sent you and he'll buy me a coffee at some point. Guys, I hope that was helpful. The thing is, I love the idea of manures and, and worms and worms and manure. They go hand in hand, they go well together. But if you're talking about using worms to manage horse manure, you're talking about a crap ton of worms and, uh, and, and that would get expensive in a hurry. So if you're not in it for the money, stick with hot composting. Okay, guys, that's it. If you got any questions about any of this, feel free to shoot me an email, leave a comment below. I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button and we will see you on the next episode.